Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to discuss preparing solutions. Dilution calculations. Today's essential question, which you should answer in your summary, how are amounts calculated when diluting a solution? Alright, so preparing solutions. Often, we use something called concentrated solutions. These are what we call stock solutions. Um, so what a scientist will do is, is make a solution that's got a really high molarity or, or, a, or a lot of solute per, per solvent. Think about if anyone's ever made that orange juice, mm, the, the frozen orange juice in that tube, right? That's a, that would be something like a concentrated solution. I mean, you wouldn't eat that. It's too strong, right? Um, the stock solutions, in our case, we're talking about that orange juice concentrate stuff, can be diluted to different concentrations as needed. So you take this, this high concentration solution, and we can talk about the orange juice or maybe a salt solution like an NaCl solution. It's really, really high concentration, and we dilute it to the concentration we want when we want to use it. So diluting a solution will reduce the number of moles of solute per amount of solution because we're adding more solvent. Okay. So to do this, we use the formula M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. Okay, And M1 and V1 are the initial stock. Okay, So it's, it's, it's the initial molarity and the initial volume. Okay. M2 and V2 are the final concentration or molarity and volume. Um, and you'll note if you remember the um, molarity formula, we had M molarity equals mole over liter. The volume unit for the for the molarity formula had to be liters. This time it just says volume which means we can use liters or milliliters or deciliters or whatever. Okay, so again, M1V1 equals M2V2. That's, that's really all there is to it. The big trick is figuring out who's M1, who's M2, who's V1, who's V2. Pretty easy though. Okay, let's try a couple practice problems. Um, again, we're using the formula M1V1 equals M2V2. Um, the big trick here is to figure out who's M1V1 and who's M2V2, keeping in mind that sometimes they write M1 and V1 next to each other in the problem and sometimes not. So it's best to not just pick the first two numbers as M1 and V1 and the second two as M2 and V2, but actually read through the story. All right, so this says, how many milliliters of a stock solution of 2 molar MgSO4? would you need to prepare 100 milliliters of 0.4 molar MgSO4? Okay, so it looks to me like those go together, and those would, we're preparing that, so those would be our twos, our final. And how many milliliters would be our X? And that goes with 2 molar, and those would be our M1V1. All we got to do now is plug it in. So our M1, we've decided, is 2 molar. Our V1 is how many, which means it's an X. And then our M2 is 0 0.400 molar. And our V2 volume is 1000 milliliters. Easy enough. Okay, and from here we will just solve. So on the left side we still have 200 molar, 2.00 molar X. Um, on the right side we'll have 20.0 molar milliliters. And the reason I wrote 20.0 is because we have three sig figs and four sig figs. So we need to keep the three sig figs. Except for I can't do my math. How about if we try that again? How about if we say 
40.0 molar milliliter. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, now we need to solve for x, right? So we need to get x by itself. So we'll divide both sides by 2 molar. The molar crosses out. And when you divide, you should end up with 20.0 milliliters, and that includes the correct number of sig figs. Not too bad. All right, we've got another practice problem here. This time, hit pause. Try to do it by yourself. Hit play. See how you did. All right, so when I read through this, it says, what volume of water is needed to make 550 milliliter of 0.4 molar. Okay, I think that these go together, 550 milliliter of 0.5 molar. Okay, and that's what we're making, so that would be our twos, right, our finals, which means what volume would be the X and 10 molar, and those would be our M1s. Okay, now when we plug it in, we're going to have X, nope, did that wrong. M1. M1 is 10 molar. V1 is X. And M2 is 0 0.50 molar. And V2 is 550. 550 milliliters. All right, so when we do the calculations, we're going to end up with 10 molar x equals, let's see, 275 molar milliliter. Now to get the x by itself, it's on the left again, so we're going to divide both sides by 10 molar, allowing the molar to cancel out. And that gives us 27.5 milliliters. If we go back and look at sig figs, we have 1 and 2 and 2. So we're going to have 1 sig fig. So we're going to drop the 7, which makes it, which is 5 or bigger, so that makes it 2 a 3. Because the 7 is before a decimal, we need a placeholder, so 30 milliliters. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.